This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Charlene Aaron. Coming up, the FDA authorizes new COVID boosters to tackle subvariants of the Omicron strain. We'll have the details. Then we'll look at take a look at the California bill that would make it a sanctuary state for children seeking transgender medical treatment. Plus, it's the TSA of the future. New technology is being developed that could reduce the hassle of flying. But first, our top story. A America. That's what President Biden is calling the Republican Party in a primetime speech to encourage Democrats to vote. After comparing Trump-led Republicans to semi-fascists recently, the president is doubling down on that narrative during last night's address. CBN's Brody Carter reports. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. President Biden revived his 2020 campaign phrase, Soul of the Nation, Thursday for his primetime speech in Philadelphia. It kicks off a two-month fight as Democrats try to hold on to control of the House and Senate in the midterm elections. And the president came out swinging. No matter what the white supremacists and the extremists say, I made a bet on you, the American people, and that bet is paying off. But while the threat to American democracy is real, I want to say as clearly as we can, we are not powerless in the face of these threats. Biden's speech catered to a top concern held by Americans. A recent poll shows threats to American democracy leads the pack at 29 percent, with both sides apparently blaming the other for that threat. It was tied with the cost of living. Jobs in the economy are a close second at 28 percent, followed by immigration and climate change. Not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. The speech came just over two months before the midterm elections. Biden's approval ratings have rebounded, but still remain low in the 42 percent range. Republicans have been favored to take back the House of Representatives. And although Democrats have gained some momentum recently, the GOP still seems to hold the advantage and Republicans criticized Biden's attacks. The first lines out of his mouth should be to apologize for slandering tens of millions of Americans as fascists. Many Republicans believe the president's address will further divide the country and that it was nothing more than a campaign speech, turning voters' attention away from other issues. It's a messaging tactic analysts say Biden has used before. It comes right on the heels of, you know, the raid on Mar-a-Lago and, and several other things that seem to be kind of gearing up for we have to get the American public's mind uh, turned away from um, away from things like maybe the economy or the immigration situation. And we have to begin to focus in on the fear. You must fear the other party. And this is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. We do not encourage violence. We are still an America that believes in honesty and decency. And former President Trump responded to the speech on Truth Social. Someone should explain to Joe Biden slowly but passionately that MAGA means as powerfully as mere words can get, make America great again. If he doesn't want to make America great again, which through words, action and thought, he doesn't, then he certainly shouldn't be representing the United States of America. End quote. Brody Carter, CBN News. If you want the U.S. Postal Service to deliver free at-home COVID tests to your door, today will be the last day to get them. The Biden administration is pausing a program it's been using to provide free tests over congressional funding, though it could resume if Congress provides more money. That news comes as the FDA grants emergency authorization for the next round of COVID booster shots. They're aimed at protecting against the BA4 and BA5 subvariants of the Omicron strain, which make up 99 percent of all new cases. The California State Senate recently passed a bill making it a sanctuary state for children seeking transgender medical treatment, even without their parents' permission. The bill authorizes California courts to take temporary emergency jurisdiction over out-of-state minors. It would make California a legal destination for kids who want to make their sex changes permanent and potentially a gateway for out-of-state children to receive hormones, puberty blockers, and even surgery. The bill now goes to Governor Gavin Newsom for his signature. 
Well, the Pennsylvania School District is allowing the Satanic Temple to host a back-to-school night event later this month. No specific details have been released yet, but last year the school district voted against allowing an after-school Satan club at one of their elementary schools. In April, the Satanic Temple threatened to sue the school board, but according to the New York Dispatch, the lawsuit has not been filed. And for more on this story, go to CBNNews.com. Student test performance in reading and math is causing concern nationwide. A national study found that reading and math scores for standardized tests for nine-year-old students fell sharply during the pandemic. Reading scores saw the largest decrease in 30 years, and math scores saw the first decrease in the history of testing done by the National Center for Education Statistics. Between 2020 and 2022, math saw an average score decrease of seven points and reading scores fell five points. The steep decline affects all regions and most races. Israel is maintaining a pressure campaign urging President Biden not to sign the Iranian nuclear deal. As CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl reports, the latest effort includes a plea from thousands who spent their careers protecting Israel. This letter, signed by dozens of former Israeli generals to President Biden, represents 5,000 representatives across Israel's military, security and law enforcement agencies. He published a letter calling President Biden not to sign the agreement with Iran. We think that this agreement is a huge threat to Israel, to the Middle East, to the whole world. And it basically paves the way legally for the Iranians to become a nuclear power uh, in the end of the agreement in uh, 2031. According to Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid's office, he spoke directly to President Biden about their shared commitment to stopping Iran's progress towards a nuclear weapon. The statement added that President Biden emphasized his deep commitment to preserving Israel's capability to deter its enemies and to defend itself by itself against any threat. We're talking about a future existential threat to Israel. This is just kicking the can along the road. Reserve Brigadier General Amir Avivi, founder of the Israel Defense and Security Forum, says a signed agreement would lead to major issues worldwide. If the Middle East is destabilized, the price of oil will go up. The whole chain of supply will be affected. And terrorism will be everywhere. After a briefing from Lapid, former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke directly to Iran's leadership. I want to send a very clear message to the Ayatollahs in Iran. With an agreement or without an agreement, they will never get a nuclear weapon. Supporters of re-entering the deal, like Biden, believe the original 2015 accord effectively restrained Iran's nuclear capabilities, although military intelligence reports and U.N. inspectors have refuted that conclusion. For us, this deal doesn't make sense. It's very, very dangerous, and we call upon the president of the United States to stop this deal and go back to sanctions and a viable military option. The White House confirmed that during the conversation with Lapid, President Biden underscored U.S. commitment to never allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. And you can see more news from the Middle East with Chris and his team on the CBN News channel tonight at 8.30 Eastern or on the CBN News app. Coming up, see how new technology could lead to shorter lines at security checkpoints and maybe even no lines at all. Stay with us. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. The day you can go through airport security with your shoes on may not be far off. New technology is being rapidly developed that will increase national security and reduce the hassle of flying. Caitlin Burke brings us this report on the TSA of the future. The terror attacks of September 11, 2001 meant an immediate change in air travel, but enhanced security measures evolved over time. Unfortunately, there's continued to have events that happen. You had the underwear bomber, which changed the way we looked at people screening. And all of a sudden, body scanners became the norm. You had the, the shoe bomber. So there's all these events that took place. And so there's a lot of a reactive approach to it. By being proactive, however, the TSA and its partners have worked to stay ahead of potential threats. We need to continuously be innovative. And we need to continuously come up with new methods 
of improving security. We have to keep coming up with new methods of doing it because our adversaries are also continuously looking at new ways to defeat what they know we have. Kanan Krishnaswamy works at the U.S. Department of Energy's Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. One of its missions is national security, and researchers are behind many of the screening technology in airports today. The portals that you go through with your hands uh, above your head, that came out of the laboratory. In fact, we lovingly at the laboratory, we call this the PNNL salute. Those scanners use millimeter wave technology. That technology, the basic technology and, and the basic invention came out in the 1990s. We've had that system or that technology available since the 1990s. Now, there was no real uh, you know, need for commercial deployment or deployment in the airports because airport security at that time was very different. The initial technology was actually marketed to be used in apparel fitting. Do you stand in the portals, get yourself measured so that you have exact body measurements that can, get, can be transferred to somebody that's making clothes and they can fit clothes for you accurately. Then 9-11 catapulted millimeter wave technology to the forefront of national security. So that's the older generation of the technology that is currently being sold even today uh, at the airports. PNNL researchers are constantly working on taking their technologies one step further. And now a second generation millimeter wave system is close to being deployed. The way HexWave works is, first of all, it's a walkthrough portal and it uses radio frequency and real-time 3D video rate imaging so we can determine if an individual has a threat on their body. We've trained it to ignore some of the common benign objects, so you won't have to divest. So your phone, your keys, your belt, wallet, watches, glass cases. We use the AI so we can provide automated decisions to a security operator to process people at speed. Bill Frayne, the CEO of Liberty Defense, which developed HexWave, says the key differentiator between it and existing technologies is the ability to detect non-metallic threats. And as you know, the, the people trying to do and defeat the system to do harm, they're using, they're being more creative. They're using 3D plastic guns. They're using liquid explosives. You know, they know that some of these metallic um, detection systems out there can't detect that. Liberty has also licensed a shoe scanning technology from PNNL that can be used inside the HexWave or existing body scanners. Imagine if you didn't have to take your shoes off at the airport. Talk about, you know, passenger experience. Um, you know, that's probably top of the list um, when we talk to people who are going to the airports. While this scanning tech is a few years away, the HexWave system will soon be deployed to screen aviation workers who access secure areas of airports. After that, the goal is for it to be used at all security checkpoints, allowing travelers to pass through without breaking stride. The goal is high level of security and detection capability, but make it so that there's a low false alarm rate so you continue to process the passengers and make it a good experience. Some other interesting technology coming down the pipeline includes the ability to differentiate between powders and liquids in checked baggage and a way to detect explosives in their vapor form so that bomb sniffing dogs are no longer necessary. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Still ahead, we take a look at the top five stories that are trending in the world of entertainment. Welcome back to CBN Newswatch. After waiting a decade in the minor league, Wynton Bernard has finally been called up to the majors. See the now viral phone reaction from his mother. Plus, actor and youth pastor Kel Mitchell has joined with Pray.com. He's lending his voice to the reading of the famous Sermon on the Mount. Ephraim Graham has the latest trending stories in entertainment. At number five, we've got an exclusive preview of an incredible film based on a real life story and a monkey takes the starring role. It was, it was in the hospital. I was lying in the bed. It was cold. There were all these nurses. I know I, I looked like I was out of it, but I wasn't. I was awake. And it hurt a lot and I couldn't tell anyone. And then you came in. And you said, 
Don't leave, Nathaniel. You don't have my permission. It begins with Nate, a young man whose life is turned upside down after he is left a quadriplegic. To him, moving forward in life looks and feels impossible. That is, until he meets a service animal, Gigi, a curious and intelligent capuchin monkey. There she is. Hey, Gigi. I don't think she likes you. <laughs> oh, she likes me. She just doesn't know it yet. What I really have learned from my own family and from this film is just how, like, respect for, for conquering, for triumph, for moving through it, for choosing life rather than cho and choosing good life. Gigi and Nate is being released this Friday, September 2nd. It is worth seeing. At number four, I want to go home. Dismal ticket sales at the box office have this weekend earning its place as the lowest grossing of the summer, with theaters taking in an estimated 54 million total for all titles. Next weekend's box office numbers stand to be a bit better, with big news for September 3rd, National Cinema Day. For one day this year, September 3rd, tickets will cost just $3 at a majority of American theaters. It's part of a newly launched National Cinema Day to lure moviegoers during a quiet spell at the box office. More than 3,000 locations, including AMC and Regal Cinemas, are participating, as well as the major studios. At number three. Hello. This is Kel Mitchell, and I want to welcome you to tonight's Bedtime Bible Story. That's youth pastor and actor Kel Mitchell, now lending his voice to the streaming app Pray.com, reading of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Tonight's story is based on the teachings of Jesus, spoken from a hillside in the land of Galilee. At number two. My brother gave his life hunting the enemy. His task is now mine. The long-awaited The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power streams to Amazon September 2nd. This epic series is set thousands of years before the events of Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Stand with me. Ours was no chance meeting, not fate, nor destiny. Ours was the work of something greater. Now, Robert, I understand you were a serious Tolkien fan. Yeah, I always have been. I've always loved, you know, sort of like, I, I read The Hobbit when I was really, really young, and and um, and I loved the movies. Um, I used to, I remember going to a birthday party of my, of my best mate, Josh Hairsign. And uh, we, we all sat in the back row in the second movie and we were all pretending we were shooting orcs. Um, <laughs> there were bows and arrows and stuff. So it was always just a big part of growing up. I think I was just in that right space at the right time with my age where, I, where it was like sort of perfect for me. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. Sophia and Awine, I have to talk about the chemistry between the two of you uh, on screen. <laughs> on screen. <laughs> <laughs> One day this will be your kingdom. The first uh, the first time I met Sophia, she had a child in, in her arms <laughs> and she was kind of walking towards me like this with a massive open, open smile and she went, hello, love. <laughs> <laughs> and with the other arm, she kind of, she kind of put, put around me, you know, embraced me and immediately I was part of the family. Choose not the path of fear, but that of faith. At number one. Mom, I'm going to the major leagues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, Mama. I'm going, Mom. I promise. I promise, Mom. I'm going. It's the phone call that's gone viral. Winton Bernard telling his mom the major leagues called after a decade in the minors. Winton. How you doing, Steve? My youngest son's name is Winton. No, it's not. Yes, he is. What do you do for a living, Winton? I, uh, I study at Niagara University. I play Division One baseball there. And uh, currently, I'm trying to grow out the pro like you used to. That's all the players do. We all met Winton 11 years ago on Family Feud. And now, she won. Tap toward third. Major League hit for Winton Bernard, the 31 year old rookie. I love you so much. Thank you for everything, Mom. Thank you. Coming up, find out how one person is using his 30th birthday to spread 30 acts of kindness. Great story. Stay with us.
It is all in a birthday's work. Brian Chilioxos is turning 30 this year, and instead of taking a trip or making a big purchase, he's choosing to do 30 acts of kindness by his 30th birthday. And so far, he's made more than 400 desserts for San Jose firefighters, and right now he's collecting paper, markers, disinfecting wipes, and other supplies to make 150 supply kits for middle schools in Oakland, California. He says he considers kindness addictive and hopes other are inspired to do so as well. And that is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can find more of our news programs on the CBN News channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. Also, tell us what you think about the stories you've seen by emailing newswatch at CBN.com or talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you have join us the next time and have a wonderful day.